What's going on guys, GH here, I'm back to give you guys more MMO news And this month, December, we got old MMOs getting re-released MMO companies making deals with console companies New classes, new gameplay trailers for upcoming MMOs Updates, and more And with that said, let's not waste any more time Let's do this Let's start with a little bit of update on what's happening to Lost Ark we just got the Soul Harvest update in November which includes the Soul Eater class and events that gives you stuff as you increase your item level or gear score. And yeah, they also combined the Jumpstart servers with the old ones because it was a disaster raiding in the Jumpstart servers as there's only a few players there. Now, if the roadmap is going to be followed, then we're supposed to get the Voldis Continent in December. It will include another Abyssal Dungeon and a new Elixir system. So there it goes. I like the content update cycle of Lost Ark, the game is getting better and better. Next up, Ica Online is going to be re-released globally in December 5 and there will be some pre-registration rewards being offered. So if you want to check out Ica Online, there it goes on the screen. Quick description, it's a fantasy MMORPG focused on what the game called Nation War. It's basically one group bullying a group without a whale. Next MMO news is for DFO, Dungeon Fighter Online. About a week or two ago, Dungeon Fighter just got an update, Season 7, Act 8. The content update introduces the side story quest with an entry level of 110, accessible on all days. The content requires a recommended party size of 4 and a fame requirement of 31k. It shouldn't be that hard, so there it goes. This side-scrolling action MMO is still getting updates regularly. Next up is for Tree of Savior. A day ago, if I'm correct, IMC announced a new upcoming class for Tree of Savior called Pontifex. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, according to this, Pontifex is an extremely powerful casting class who finds the greatest satisfaction in judging evil heresies in the name of fate. This class also has a unique mechanic called Sin and Pardon that can grant you special effects according to how it is used. So based on what I can tell, it could be a cleric or a mage. We'll see. Next up, we just got a new gameplay trailer for Legend of Ymir like a week ago. So there it goes. It looks nice. It's mostly cutscenes with QTE and some gameplay without UI. I was expecting to see the UI but I guess they're not that far ahead when it comes to developing the game. The game looks nice and I think we're gonna need a decent GPU to run this. And by the way, we are expecting this game to be released in 2024. But you know, as always, delays happen. Next up, I just visited the Nexon website and I found out that Mabinogi just got a new update called Mabinogi Beyond. The Beyond update for Mabinogi introduces several key features and improvements. Part-time jobs have undergone some changes with the addition of a part-time job bulletin board in the cities and towns. Rewards and point system have been adjusted and a new server-wide buff that enhances part-time job rewards when activated. Now also according to this, there's also gonna be the growth guide, a new system that offers rewards and points for completing objectives in combat and life categories. And there's more, just visit the Mabinogi website for the full patch notes. Next MMO news is for Toram Online. It just got a new major update with new story missions and new maps. It basically introduces new story missions namely Underwater City and the thing in the abandoned district. Players can initiate the mission Underwater City by transitioning from Espuma Dome entrance to Aqua City. Alongside these missions, new maps have been unveiled including Aqua City, the seabed, and the abandoned district, providing players with fresh locations for their adventures. The update expands the game's narrative inviting players to delve into the unfolding adventure within these new environments. Now for some Fantasy Star Online 2 new Genesis news. In the December 6th update for PSO2 NGS, notable additions include the main story chapter 6 part 4. The update also brings a new enhancement system, tech arts customization, and a major band's makeover for the bouncer class. The newer exploration region sees increased enemy levels and new boss encounters, doll bags and creative space receive improvements and various enhancements are made, including increased drop rates and new symbol arts parts. The December 13th and 20th updates introduced a high difficulty quest against malignant Dark Falls Ages and a Christmas themed event with quests and rewards, a new mission pass and a collaboration with Black Lagoon featuring avatar items and weapon camos. So there he goes. Next up, a few days ago, SonyInteractive.com posted that NCSoft and Sony Interactive Entertainment have entered into a strategic global business partnership as announced by their respective CEOs. 
The collaboration spans various global business fields, including mobile. The partnership aims to capitalize on SESOF's technological expertise and Sony's global leadership in entertainment to explore synergies and create new enjoyable experiences for a diverse audience. And according to this, the CEO expresses their excitement about pushing the boundaries of gaming and expanding PlayStation's reach beyond consoles. So yeah, as you see here, they said mobile. What the what? What do you guys think? Pay to win Sony Mobile MMO confirmed? And yeah, by the way guys, Throne and Liberty will be launching in December 7 in Korea. So see you there. Next up, Soul Frame News. The latest dev stream for Soul Frame provided key insights into upcoming pre-alpha phase scheduled for mid-December. The development approach mirrors Warframe's gradual building with community involvement. To participate, players need to sign up on soulframe.com and reserve their Envoy title. The initial pre-alpha phase will involve a limited number of PC players with invites sent out chronologically via email. I will try to sign up, so hopefully I can check it out. Next up, the first teaser and microsite for Blade & Soul Neo Classic has been released. Okay, so I'm new to this. As I'm making this video, I saw this on Facebook and according to this, if I'm correct, they are remastering Blade & Soul in Unreal Engine 4. Nothing much is said on the video, which you are watching right now. So we're gonna follow this and see how it goes. Next quick news for an old school MMO, Metin 2. Metin 2 is introducing Winter with the upcoming launch of the Yohara Boost servers from November 24, 2023 to February 26th of 2024. Players can swiftly level up a new character to champion level 1, equipped with powerful gears and boost. Each region including Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and Turkey will have one dedicated server with Tiger Ghost players accessing the Western Europe server. At the conclusion of the Yohara Boost event, players will receive a free transfer for their champion level 1 character to seamlessly continue their adventure on the regular servers in Yohara. More details in an FAQ will be released soon by the Metin 2 team. And for the last bit of news for December, Sword Art Online Integral Factor major updates and full burst skills. In the latest updates for Aincrad 51st Floor, a new feature called Full Burst Skills has been introduced. These skills grant temporary invulnerability and can be activated after certain attacks, allowing players to use powerful Full Burst associated skills. The update also includes details about the challenges on the 51st floor, known as the Pet, where the assault team faces tough adversaries. Additionally, the player's level cap has been raised to 230, introducing the Machina Integral Series weapons with relaxed production and transformation requirements. So there it goes guys, happy holidays. I can't believe 2023 is almost over. Time really flies. Anyways, have fun guys. See you in game. And this is Game Your Cool. See you in the next one.